Hello everybody and welcome to the POAP Creation Community Call number 18. Today is May the 11th, 2022. It is now 7 p.m. Eastern. It's 6 p.m. Central for me because that's where I live. But I hope everybody is strapped up and ready to go with today's show. My name is Mr. Mojo and I'm one of your hosts. And of course, Super Fizz, hello. Welcome to the show today. Hi, I found the unmute button. Uh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, and the audio is much better, right? <laughs> I, I, I rush shipped a uh, headset just so I wouldn't get harassed and bullied this time. So I think that I'm set to go. Well, I think it sounds great. Logic Beach, welcome back. Hello, sir. Hello, guys. And yes, peer pressure is a, a solid motivator, as uh, Superfist can attest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to be here, guys. And of course, from Plapathon Genetics, hello. Good to have you back as always. Hello, hello. Awesome. And DeFi Dude, you are back up here. Hello, sir. Hey, hey. Hi, everyone. Awesome. And we did have a special guest, but uh, he has left the stage. Oh, no. But uh, he will come back up soon. But in the meantime, while that's going on, Logic Beach, you want to talk about dgen and how we use it to distribute po apps in this call sure um so dgen bot is live and running now and what that'll do is it'll keep track of everyone who is listening in on this call or talking in it um and it will give you a po app for being in this call if you stayed in this call uh for longer than 10 minutes i believe um and did not deafen yourself which is the little headphone uh, icon near the mute. You can stay muted, um, but you cannot deafen yourself or else it will disqualify you for the PO app. So yeah, just hang out until the end of the call at around 7 p.m. and I will end the bot and you can claim your PO app at that point. We'll describe how to claim it uh, at the end of the show. Awesome. All right, so John Valjean, he will come up here in a second. But in the meantime, I would like to talk about our Slido. So this is a way for you to be able to ask us questions, and we will be able to answer them. I do have some that are pre-selected, but on this Slido, you're able to ask us anything you want, and you can also thumbs up any questions that you would like for us to answer. So ones with more thumbs up will be more likely for us to answer. But all right. While we wait for um, John to get back up here, I'm going to go ahead and start kind of easing into it. But we did talk about how DGEN is now being able to be used on Twitter Spaces. And I gave a small explanation about it last week. And John, he's going to go into more detail about all of that. But in the meantime, before he gets back up here, we can go ahead and sort of talk about this. So we touched briefly on it last week, but... What kind of utility would we like to see in POAP distribution bots? What little things would we like to be in control of? And uh, I'll let anybody who wants to start on that go ahead and start. But uh, I'll give it a moment before I say my piece on that. YouTube distribution. Yeah, I definitely think that's kind of the number one, right? Like, how can we get to YouTube distribution? There's John. Awesome. So I oh. guess I, I guess that you can kind of join in this conversation since... Uh, since unfortunately your power went out, but you're back yeah. up here. We're kind of flip-flopping this topic, but we are trying to talk about utility that we would love to see in pull-up distribution bots. Now, you're somebody who helps develop something like that with DGEN. You recently got on to Twitter Spaces. What do you envision as being the next steps, or are you trying to still really perfect some stuff? Um, yeah, well, we've definitely... Uh, we've definitely... You know, we always trying to perfect things but uh we've kind of been doing research on uh, twitch and zoom and yeah super excited to hear what the community thinks uh, I, I believe you said youtube uh people were interested in yes especially people like us we're definitely interested in being able yes. to have a very solid distribution method on youtube Yes, uh, we had some very angry people last Poapathon call. One of them tracked me down on Twitter to harass me. And by harass me, they just said that they were very sad they didn't get the Poap. And I said, I can't wait until devs figure out how to make it available on YouTube, you know, DGEN. And they were like, yeah. when? And I was like, whenever the devs can. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
So would people aren't watching live on YouTube, are they? Or yeah, yeah. So Poapathon are, are these uh, Poaps recorded? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so Poapathon films their episodes live on YouTube, uh, and then they're you know permanently on YouTube. So we have about 150 people who watch live on YouTube every week, and right now we're doing secret word distribution, and we'll mint out 500 codes. And as soon as we say that secret mm. word, within about 10 seconds to 30 seconds, all of our secret words are used up. Um, so if you think about that, 120 people watching, mm -hmm. and within 30 seconds, um, 500 POAPs are minted out. That's uh, quite a discrepancy there. So we understand the community's um, frustration with the amount of POAP poaching that's going on. Um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely a need. I know that there is already, um, DeFi dude said something about Twitch distribution. I know that there is a Twitch distributor that's not DGen, but yes, um, if we could get DGen on or okay. yeah. anything on YouTube, please. Check it out. We'll, uh, yeah, well, we will, we will check it out. You know, we'll have to go and, and figure out, I'm sure they've got a. They've got a way for us to uh, do do the development on that, you know, figure out what their API is. So, yeah, definitely appreciate that. Um, see if we can listen in or figure out another way to to stop the poaching. You know, I know that's a I know that's a tough problem, and uh, um, you know, having some sort of uh, some sort of account validation place where like, you would have a certain co-app to kind of prove you were you were actually a person. Um, is that something people are interested in? Where we could look at the address that was claimed the co-app, and then um, uh, like that to kind of stop the poaching down. Kind of a token validation like Collabland. Yep. All right. So. You are cutting out a little bit, but I'm going to try to sort of reiterate what you said, at least from what I was able to grab. So essentially, you're asking um, whether or not having some sort of way to verify who is claiming the PO app, uh, like some sort of method where we can pinpoint who is actually claiming. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm sorry, you're just cutting out so much, John. Uh, let, me, let me come right back. All right, sure. No, no, no problem. So I think that we can kind of go ahead and, and sort of move on. I'll hop in here yeah. real quick if you don't mm -hmm. mind. Sure, please. Hey, so uh, everyone, my name is Anthony. I recently joined the POAP team to help lead marketing and growth efforts. And I just wanted to hop in here because we do have someone building, you know, in the application layer on top of POAP who is going to be beta testing YouTube integrations pretty soon. So can't say the name of the company, but, you know, one team that's building on top of POAP, an amazing group there. And we'll be running some beta tests with some YouTubers, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So that will be super interesting interesting um if it is successful maybe we'll have them uh, come on one of the community calls and talk about it as well yeah and really i think the big uh, thing to talk about is um how are like what are some solutions that can help them get there because they have definitely I, if it who is uh, who i believe it is um they've definitely reached out to us trying to get feedback from us saying okay what what platforms do you want us to be on or what ideas do you have that can help us make it more seamless or is there any kind of ideas you have for what direction that we want to take? And um, that's why I, I want people like John in here because, you know, he he helps do the DJ and everything. We absolutely love it. It it handles our needs here on Discord spectacularly and it's so easy to use. And, uh, you know, just getting people up here, really talking about it so that we know how to move forward. I think that's really important to do. But okay, John, now that you're back on here, would you like to repeat what you were trying to say earlier so that we can better understand you? Yeah, sorry. I, I switched from cell back to my computer now that my Wi-Fi is back up. Uh, yeah, I was talking about like uh, account linking and some sort of token validation uh, like Collabland does for... Uh, you know, either you have to have a certain POAP to 
receive the POAP app or you have to pay like a very small fee um, to receive it. I, I guess I don't know how much of a problem the poaching is. You know, is, it, is the poaching so much of a problem that people would be willing to pay to kind of keep it away? Yeah, um, I think it really depends on the transaction fee or or maybe it's even like uh, people, they're making their content, they use a subscription service, and so it just makes it easier to know who's allowed to have the POAPs or not because the only way they can watch your content is with the subscription service. Yeah, it's nice on Discord because we can we can track who's actually on the call, right? right? And then, you know, on Twitter... We have to do secret, you know, we, we did our Twitter spaces, but it's really just kind of secret word um, distribution. So it, it's tough. It all depends on what the platform allows for. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see what, what YouTube allows for. Um, but it, it's been nice on Discord. I, I, I wonder if like we could build some sort of like a front end um, and have like, just like a, a quiz, even like a three question quiz um, about like I what love, the call is about. I love that kind of concept, especially if it's, uh, you know, we submit 10 questions during the call and then the respondent gets a random three pick of those three, three questions. So it can't easily be botted. Um, those seem to be really effective. Nice. Yeah. We're, we're hoping to roll out a front end. So uh, that could definitely, uh, We'll definitely look into that and it'll be super fun. Yeah. So with DGEN's introduction into Twitter spaces, it's something that is definitely going to help us with things on there because I know that in the past we've been using secret words and things like that in order to actually distribute a PO app from a Twitter space. So do you want to talk more about um, the solution that you came up with and how people are able to implement DGEN bot in their Twitter space for us, please? Uh, yeah, so right now we're actually just using secret word uh, POAP distribution as well. But you can set up the you can set up the event and the secret word um, on the bot commands channel uh, on a, a Discord server with uh, with the DGen bot uh, signed up. If you have uh, the authorized DGen role, and yeah, you can set it up. Uh, use a secret word, and then the user DMs um, at DGen POAP. Uh, the secret word and receives the PO app. Right. So, okay. so basically, DGen bot is able to see who is actually in the in the Twitter space. We we actually can't because Twitter does not allow it, as far as I know. Uh, if Slinky Potato is here, he might be able to say differently. But right mm -hmm. now, I think that is how it is. Okay. We cannot see, and that's just a, a Twitter, a, you know, Twitter terms of service with their API. We we can't know. All right. So basically, the the solution was to basically allow the POAP distributor more control over how long a secret word is available for a POAP. Yes. All right. Awesome. So yeah, you see that definitely with the limitations in the social uh, media platforms that we have now, where because everything is so locked up, you know, it's it's all closed source and everything, or maybe we're only allowed to see this and that. You know, they pick and choose what we're allowed to use that it makes it more difficult in order to do something like distribute a PO app to people who attend your events. Um, and that's why I'm excited to see uh, these Web3 platforms starting to pop up, like Nifty Chat, for example, is one that always comes to mind, where you can go in there. It's, it's Discord-like, but, you know, like it's based on Web3. You sign in with your wallet. And uh, people are definitely trying to make know whatever a twitter clone or whatever where you just sign in with your wallet as well i'm thinking that whenever things kind of move on to that if they do that this kind of stuff is going to be in mind you know what i mean it'll make it easier for people like you to actually develop things like this more absolutely seamlessly. one one of the things that the community manager can do is they can choose when to distribute their po app so they could you know they could say the word and then give it an hour or two Right, mm -hmm. and that that might help uh, reduce some of the poaching. Yes, and even, I mean, we even see it as, as whenever those words get out, then that's when you really see 
your your mints go sky high on a Po app. Um, is there anything different that DGen is doing to combat against that? Like, how exactly is it combating against mass distribu- uh, mass distribution of mint links? Or I should say the secret word. I, I guess with with the Twitter with the Twitter integration, we're still in beta. And I know Slinky Potato is definitely thinking about how we can we can figure that out. And he is he's deep in the, the Twitter API trying to to work through that. Um, we're able to do it very well on Discord and then to you know actually see who was in the call if they deafened themselves and make sure they were in the call for at least 10 minutes. Um, I don't know if I have got, I've got a great answer for you, uh, about how we're going to actually implement that on Twitter, but I know we are working on our, our front end and we're hoping to have that released very soon. And, uh, I think, you know, the quiz functionality, uh, might be a good solve for that. And I like how super fizz was talking about having maybe 10 questions in there and then, um, you know, giving a random set of three. Yeah, I definitely think that something like that could work. You know, just trying to figure out ways to make sure that people are a human. <laughs> you know, you have to sit there and think about that stuff, and I think it's a healthy conversation to have, and I'm so glad that you were able to come on here and have it with us. Absolutely. I think one of the other problems that we're having with the secret word is certain people in certain areas of the world are not able to access the POAP app. Um, and so they feel excluded, even though they get to watch us on YouTube. And um, solving some of those things would be great as well. Uh, so they're not able to access the POAP app, but they're able to access YouTube? Correct. So because they're watching YouTube on a computer with like a VPN, uh-huh. Yes, but the app on their phone um, is blocked for yeah. reasons. We'll just put it that way. Okay. Well, yeah, so something like that, we could, uh, you know, if they could access Twitter or Discord, and maybe they can or cannot, if they could access our front end, they could receive the PO app. Uh, Absolutely. Through, through the secret word. Yeah. It's an interesting world we live in where there are people in certain parts of the world that are seeking freedom from tyranny, um, but their governments don't want them to. Maybe we should move on. Yeah, I, I think that's a topic that's not a, necessarily appropriate for, for, for this medium. Freedom is always appropriate, but yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, we've been thinking about, you know, building out our front end, and what we think about mainly is, like, how do we setting setting up events, not really so much about, you know, having users claim them. Um, but I think this is super interesting where we, we could definitely put in uh, ways for users to claim POAPs easily through the front end um, and ways for community managers to, like, prove that people are humans too. like, you know, put in uh, even just CAPTCHA on there to claim the POAP. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's super interesting. Yeah. And it's something I'm glad to, to learn about because I didn't know that, that was a problem. It's Makes something sense. we are slowly <laughs> uncovering. <laughs> yes, it's like the more we prod, the more we learn about, mm-hmm. about what the shortfalls are with what we have right now, what's available to us right now, and the best way to use our current methods and what we would love to see in future methods. And yes. it's just really, you know, it just depends on the people who want to build it you know the ones who are like man i have the big mega brain who can do it and you know (laughs) it it is what it is but uh john valjohn thank you so much for coming on to the show and talking about dgen bot now going on twitter spaces and some of the solutions that we can use to help spread poep distribution to other platforms and the shortcomings and shortfalls and things that we can do to build the bridge over it, right? Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I, I talked about the uh, the front end a little bit and I just wanted to drop a little bit more alpha, you know, keep an eye out. We will be releasing uh, 
server-wide POAP distribution uh, for a Discord server and uh, role-based POAP distribution uh, on Discord in the next couple months. Awesome. And we're definitely going to be keeping our eyes and ears open for that. But thank you so much for coming on. You can definitely stick around and and chime in on whatever we talk about. But uh, other than that, I think, Jen, it's uh, pretty much time for you to talk about what is exciting you and POAP this week. All right, guys. So we have a really big thing that has happened with POAP linking um, bigger brands into the POAP world. So you know that's what I love to focus on here with POAP. And ours today was a launch with Pepsi and the Strength of a Woman Festival and Summit. So this was presented by Pepsi and Mary J. Blige. Uh, the NFT evening um, covered this story twice. So I'm going to drop the link to both of those here in our chat. Um, so the first one was about the launch. And then the second one was about the actual event. And then I'm going to drop... Um, a picture from that event. Oh, there it goes. The, the picture showed up in that link. So there were the four PO apps. So you can see from the first link that I dropped in the hashtag community calls thread, the art that was there. And then they had these pads and the pads had, I believe, um, QR codes that you could come up and scan with your phone. Um, and the artwork had PO apps attached to them. So the artwork was to actual NFTs, and then you could get a PO app, which were what we called baby NFTs, um, that you could claim for going to the event. Another, um, what do we call this, news outlet also covered the event, um, and this one was called eGamers.io. So here's their um, coverage of the story. Um, and then I thought this was pretty cool. We got a LinkedIn post about it too. So if y'all are active on LinkedIn, I am because did you know that there are people that don't have any other social media but LinkedIn? Super strange, but they do. So if you would like to engage with POAP on LinkedIn, you can do that, um, which I made myself a POAP thing as well. And then the last one was a Twitter post. Um, about this whole thing. So there it is. There's a bunch of social links on your uh, preferred social media platform. But basically, Pepsi, you guys, Pepsi using POAP. Okay? Um, this is big. Pepsi has always been a front runner for setting trends and showing up and standing out. And the fact that they are in the NFT space, and not just in the NFT space, but using POAPs to help mint those bookmarks of your life, right, is incredible. Um, and so I just wanted to give a shout out for us in the POAP community that POAP is getting bigger and bigger every day. And this was something that I was really excited about. And women, because let's be truthful, we are rockin' awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, uh, Definitely put a plus one on that one. You know, something I'll say about Pepsi that I've noticed about them is that they really are doing a lot of events that highlight uh, women or minorities and what value that they bring. And I absolutely love that they were able to have an event like this. And apparently people were very impressed with the onboarding for getting their PO app. Like, they're like, yeah, they were able to set it up to where we really, really... uh understood what was going on or at least that's what i had read so i like that they had i like this setup and in fact this setup of the the tvs with the nft art and then the pads in this darkly lit area with the beautiful glowing lights i mean the presentation that's here is beautiful and the fact that you could have something on your phone to remind you of this beautiful presentation and your experience of seeing these art these pieces of art in person was really, really cool. Um, and so I'm, I'm very, very impressed with it. Um, I would love to know how these pads distributed the PO apps. Um, somebody in the op audience said that it was botted. So maybe they got bot attacked with the PO apps. Oh, no. Um, I do have... Bad distributors. 
Yeah, people could have uh, distributed the image of the QR code unless they were mm, one, one for one, yeah. uh, which should be how it is done if it wasn't. Should have used an Absolutely. IYK device. Tisk tisk. IYK. <laughs> I know. I do have, uh, at the very end, we can talk about IYK events, because I have one coming up yes. this coming weekend. But, um, yeah, so static QR codes are definitely not the way to distribute, um, even at live events. But, I mean, if your point is to get your brand out there, then this is a great way to do it. If the point is to bookmark a memory of an event, then um, something like an IYK device or a rotating QR code is definitely the way to go. Right. Yep, so getting info that these were distributed via a QR dispenser and it uses rotating QR codes. So taking a picture of it wouldn't necessarily mean that you would continually get a chance at a POAP. Sounds like they did it correct then. Yep, seems like it. I wonder how it got botted then. I'm not sure. Um, cool Whip says that this was Vayner NFT, yes, or Gary V. So... Um, no and I did that read is. that. Well, uh, well, well, okay, I, I know who that is, but I stay ignorant. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, definitely. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to talk about was that Vogue, so all the women in the uh, audience, their ears just perked up a little bit. Vogue wrote a piece about noteworthy NFTs displayed at Venice Biennale. I think Biennale. I don't know. It's It's... Italian and or French and I can't say those words um, but they minted a POAP um, or mentioned the POAP French partnership at an event. A collaborative effort between the Cameroon Pavilion, GCA DAO Curators X, Artnet and several other partners including POAP France brought together a beautiful display of multidisciplinary NFTs in an official uh, Biennale pavilion, whatever that word is. So there you go. Um, let me copy and paste the article from Vogue so that you guys can read it. Vogue magazine, by the way, is uh, fashion and beauty. Um, and then I have, I had to track down this Poe app, by the way. It's very hard. I had to do some definite digging, but there is the POAP from the article that they're talking about. So the fact that Vogue is mentioning POAPs, again, right alongside NFTs, is amazing. Yes, this was a whole art exhibit, right? An uh, NFT art mm -hmm. exhibit? Yeah. I think it it's, was. It's, I think it's pretty cool. So, okay, I do want to go ahead and say out loud that uh, there's really no proof that that Pepsi... Uh, Poap Mint was botted. Poap Mint, I should say. So, uh, okay, just want to clear that up. But anyway, going on to this. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's really, really cool that they, they held another uh, one of these NFT art shows. I believe this is not the first one. I think this is one of a few that they've already done. And, uh, you know, they, they've been popping up all around. And, you know, they're giving a pop for showing up to them. I wonder if there's a way for us to look at when uh, they plan to have more of these. I mean, obviously, this type of an event where you have an art exhibit with POAPs is probably going to be something that continues to go on for all of history. Well, yes, but, but what I mean is, like, <laughs> from Vogue specifically. Oh. Like, I wonder if there's a place that we can go to look that up. Maybe that's something we can do after the fact. But mm -hmm. yes, it, that's definitely something that, that's good that, that you brought up. If I can stop stammering on my words. <laughs> I think that's something that's great that you brought up is the fact that more and more, especially at art exhibits and stuff, since it's very interlocked and synonymous, right? People who do NFTs, they definitely, or I shouldn't say definitely, but they more than likely know about POAP. And so using POAP to basically commemorate people showing up to that art exhibit I mean, honestly, there's a lot of people who they show up to those things, and what do you do? You look at the art, and you say you had an experience. Well, when you allow for people to get a Poe app, it's able to say, hey, look, I proved that I went to go see this art. Like, I'm not lying to you, so when I tell you this insane, crazy story about this drunk guy at the art exhibit, you know, <laughs> I meant it. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. Just me rambling on. Yeah. You literally meant it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, what's interesting about this POAP, right, for the, the GCA panel talks um, where they issued the POAP in Ven- Venice, Italy, is there was only 19 of them given out. Um, so only 19 people claimed that POAP. So it's an ultra rare po- POAP. Yes. Um, I- and the, I mean, the only way that I've found that was entering in GCA panel talks. And um, to find that, I had to go digging um, through the, the POAP gallery by just doing a search for different names named in that Vogue ar- gallery or Vogue article until I found the POAP. Um, and it matched the location and all the details from the article matched this POAP. Yeah, they, they need to be linking the PO apps that they give out in these articles. <laughs> I know. We want to see. Exactly. Not just the art from the article or from the gallery. Which um, is which nice. Is pretty, yes. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. The, uh, the, the image that displays in the link is um, the NFT. The people in this image change um, genders and they change skin tones. So as you're looking at it, like the person will change who they are as you're staring at it. Um, and it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting NFT and it was just one of the NFTs on display at this gallery. So I, yeah. I, I really like that. Well, yeah, to all those POAP journalists out there, you better put those event links in your articles. I'm telling you, <laughs> don't, 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 don't be teasing me with your event. And then I don't get to see the fruits of the labor here. Yes, exactly. Don't don't make a poor tire genetics go searching <laughs> aimlessly <laughs> around. <laughs> yes, I also love uh, Amanda's comment. Poet, proof of I'm not lying to you. It's actually more like proof of truth, right? Yes. See, proof of truth. But yes, I, I do think it's awesome that that POAP is going into the bigger, wider world. I love these IRL event POAPs. I feel like that's really where, where they shine best is whenever you can go somewhere and it's like, yep, here's my Poe app. That's so awesome. I, I've, I, I feel like the trips that I have made have been enriched because of Poe app. Uh, me going to Eve Denver and me going to uh, Dev Connect, being able to go around and claim Poe apps and talk about Poe app is like, it, it really made me happy. And like, it, it got the juices flowing, you know what I mean? And so seeing these events wanting to come in and do the same thing, for their product basically it's like yes like yes use it i want to see people interact with this thing (laughs) but uh anyway as i'm gonna be done being a nerd uh, is there anything else that uh, we want to talk about on this Uh, anyone else want to say anything all right i'm gonna take that as a no (laughs) but all right guys so fizz and logic beach you wanted to talk about an academic paper that had just released about soul boundness. Decentralized <clears throat> society, finding web three's soul. I think I think uh, both of you were the ones that really deep dove into this. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the floor to talk about it, gentlemen. Thanks. Um, I am super stoked to talk about this. And so Logic Beach and I actually approached this separately. Um, and so we're probably going to have a lot to a lot of hits together. Um, but so let me begin by saying it was just released. It's a paper by Glenn Weil, uh, Pooja Olhaver, uh, and some guy called uh, Vitalik Buterin. Uh, uh, yeah, whoever it's, it's that is. It's Vatlik. Vat- Vatlik. Vitali. Um, and so to preface this, it is a, a very academic paper. And by, by saying that, what I mean is um, some of the language is it, it takes – it takes a while to get through it. It's about 30 pages, um, but it's it's incredible. I think that it's it, it's something that I might spend a few months um, kind of reviewing and sharing in snippets with the community uh, because it sets the stage for what could be um, the, the next step after DeFi. Um, and so you guys know DeFi, Decentralized Finance, is essentially a finance layer built on top of Ethereum. Uh, and so uh, this article, Decentralized Society, um, is an, I, it's shortened as DESOC, uh, which looks like DSOC to me, but I'm going to call DSOC. 
What, what are you calling it, Logic Beach? Oh, yeah, DSOC, for sure. Okay, DSOC. For sure? Yeah, certainly. I didn't have to see that twice. I was like, oh, yes. Wait, DSOC. wait. So I'm going to, I might ask that Canadian guy uh, to clarify. Uh, but, okay. <laughs> Can you guys read, um, I don't know what the book's called, The Socias. Anyways, go on. I, no, I, I did, but I, I do know that like I pronounced epoch wrong once, once, and Vitalik was like, I, th I think you mean epoch, and so yeah, he will definitely correct us. Um, so there are there are ten sections. I was able to get through five, and we actually um, Nick Zorkish from the East Acre uh, Reddit. Her and I recorded reading through the first five chapters today, uh, and that's on YouTube. I will paste a link in the community uh, chat. But what I want to share here is an extremely, like, I'm going to post that real fast, an extremely brief kind of, like, uh, overall picture so that if you're curious, you can get into it. I can't find this. Where's the uh, issue? Where's the chat? The abstract, community somebody... called. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just going to put, I'm posting a link to our video because it is a short link and inside that or underneath that video, there's a link to the actual article. The link to the article PDF is um, like 600 characters. So it's not something that's easily pasteable. Uh, so the article, uh, it talks about, uh, so finding web threes sold decentralized society, DSOC. It talks about the concept of a soul. Um, and a soul right now is kind of what we think about as just like a wallet address. Um, so, but it's a wallet address that has soul bound tokens in it. And we've, we've talked about soul bound tokens before. Um, they are a type of like ERC 721 token that can't be moved out of the account once it's, de once it's delivered. So if I have superfizz.eth, um, let's say that, um, I have an employer and they send me a soulbound token and I have, um, I've have some college experience and I get soulbound tokens from there. Um, and I know certain people, um, like I've met Colfax and he sends me his, um, soulbound token. So all of these tokens together that are locked in an account form the essence of a soul. Like that is one person, um, well, it represents one person because it can actually be like given away. Um, n not that that's good. That's not the intention, but it is possible to move a soul. Um, so there's there's other concepts like recovery through community. Like let's say that um, I lose access to my account, um, but I could contact my university that gave me a soulbound token. I could contact my bank who might have access, uh, you know, some accesses to it. Um, and rather than re relying on people, you have kind of institutions that um, that kind of collaborate to help you recover uh, your social soul. Um, and so the extension of this soulbound token, DSOC, are DAOs of souls. These are like um, DAOs that don't just represent fluid people, because in a DAO, people can come and disappear and go, and you never really know who is who. But when you are really a soul-bound soul, a soul-bound account, um, you actually represent one person. And that gives more ability to represent or more, more commitment to a DAO, more, more weight to that uh, participation. How did I do, uh, Logic Beach? What do you got? I just sort of went... Uh, sounds good. Something that you didn't mention that really piqued my interest while reading this article, um, maybe about halfway through, they start talking about uh, <clears throat> governance and DAOs and token voting. And so token voting has is flawed because, you know, whales have a lot of power and they will basically do whatever they and their really, I want to say, powerful friends will vote for. It's like there's a lot of people that hold this token, but... If there's a vote that the majority doesn't want, I say the majority of people don't want, but the majority of tokens are held by a few people do want, uh, it sort of ruins uh, governance. So I just posted this because I was trying to collect my thought while he was talking, but with soul-bound token voting, more votes for more similar souls have less voting power once they start to add up together. So what that does is it takes like this whole... Uh, collusion between a few powerful players or a lot of very similar people in the in the space and it evens the playing field for people 
that are more unique. Like if you have a lot of the same soulbound tokens as a lot of your friends and you guys all vote one way, that sort of will diminish the token or the vote power from people that are more similar all voting one way. If there's a lot of people that are similar but they all vote in different ways, that's fine. Their their votes still have the same power. I just thought this was a super interesting idea and I would never thought about this on my own, but it's such an, a cool way to give power to uh, disenfranchised people or just even people yeah. that go their own way and aren't doing what the crowd is doing. It's it's really neat. It's definitely a, a paper worth reading. It's very long. Um, it, it was a tough read. I'm not going to lie. It, it's still very worth your time, though. It's, it's yeah. very long by, by the standards of people who aren't in school anymore, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. an approach to it, just like, okay, this is this is homework. I'm going to read this paper. I'm going to take notes. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely something that you read, and you're like, wow, I have to actually use brain cells on this one. Uh, <laughs> you know? I, I, I really <laughs> expect... Um, I, I think that POAP ties deeply into this philosophy, um, and I think it's worth spending uh, several months kind of... Um, just chipping away at this until it really makes better sense. Um, and, you know, if if DSOC is going to be a reality, it's only going to become a reality because the community values it enough to bring it into existence. Um, and it's, it's sort of like, yeah, I, I see the value. I'm willing to uh, promote that effort. Um, and it really takes more people too. Yeah. Uh, when I was reading over it, what I thought was interesting is that it would build in a way to not lose your soul because you could have people vouch for you in soul recovery if it did get lost some way. And it also meant that if, say, you did a rug pull where you went in, stole, you know, um, did a pump and dump, let's say, um, where you pumped a, a coin and then dumped the community um, at, you know, once you got a peak financial gain from it, um, rebuilding a soul token to reestablish yourself as someone um, of a certain uh, stance within the community um, would take so much time that it may not be worth it. Um, and it would reduce the number of, of people that were able to do pump and dumps because the amount of... Um, uh, I don't know, backing that one of these soul bound tokens would have on you. Because if you think about it, like if you were able to click on somebody's like soul bound token profile and you'd be able to see their, um, their history, what DAOs they'd participated in and for how long and what communities and what they actually were contributing in. And like I said, were they a part of a rug pull or did they actually um, you know, participate in a community that um, they ended up being, um, n that they negatively impacted? Yeah, there's um, this, uh, there's this thing that I had spoken with Superfizz about a few weeks ago now at a lunch where we basically discussed uh, with a big group, it was like a, because of the ledger on a blockchain being open, it kind of manipulates people's behavior. You know, like you don't want to be somebody who's getting caught doing really nefarious stuff, you know. And so yeah. having something soul bound to you that has reputation attached to it, you know, it could, you know, like it's delicate, you know, you don't want to ruin it. <laughs> that, that's actually it's a, it's funny you brought that up. I didn't think about that, but. I, I do kind of believe that with our ENS addresses, we are already establishing souls, like um, kind of what Mojo and I were talking about. Like I hold ERC-20 tokens that represent my values. Um, and so I know when someone is looking at my account, they're kind of like saying, who is this person? What are they up to? Um, and so it's really like this whole idea of a soul is just a calcification of that idea. Yep. And POAPs are little glimpses into that soul because they're events that you attended. So, therefore, it shows who you are in a way. Mm -hmm. I definitely was thinking POAP very loudly when I was reading this paper. Yes. And I wondered what it would really take to, like, what would you have to change about POAPs as they already exist 
to make them soul bound? Would that require an entirely different poet contract to make them non-transferable? I think so, just intuitively, but I wonder. I mean, uh, it's, an, it's one of those papers that it seems like it might actually have some ripples from this. I, I think it's possible. Yeah. As Panic Zone says, this sounds like social credit scores. I think it says um, explicitly that they're not trying to make this sound like the Black Mirror episode where everyone has a social credit score and, you know, she starts doing some stuff and her credit score goes down and now all of a sudden she can't do anything, right? They well, so, they, they had explicitly oh, stated no, no, no. that it's not like that. And there's, I just wanted to mention that uh, they actually do um, address that idea. And, you know, any any really worthwhile technology has good and bad to it, and they talk about that as well. But... Um, wouldn't it be better, because a social credit score is probably inevitable, but wouldn't it be better if it was decentralized versus a centralized private social credit score system? They, have to, they do talk about that in the paper. That's, yeah, it, you can look at any dystopian possibility and say, oh, God, this technology is going to lead that, to that dystopian possibility. But uh, that doesn't have to be the reality. Like, you shouldn't resist positive growth for fear of negative consequences um like there is so much control and value for individuals in this uh that so i in in that black mirror dystopian idea um corporations control people um and people feel helpless but in this soul bound idea people control this soul and they have more power and control over their existence than than any external force, uh, so I I view that as very valuable. Yeah, as long as it's like as long as it's like opt in, right? You know, if, if it's someone is forcing it on you, uh, that's when that's when it makes me feel like it's the social credit system, and also it it, it should be claimable, right? Kind of like a PO app is, so people can't you know spam you with negative uh, negative soul bound things. Well, right? negative soul bound tokens, m- maybe. When it's protocolized, that's one of the things that needs to be a part of it, that you would have to sign on your end to accept the soulbound uh, token rather than having it, it forced on you. Like that is a way that people maintain autonomy is by not having something forced on a soulbound account. Uh, mm-hmm. So that that's really a great idea, something that yeah. is worth and keeping you, in mind. Can you burn the token too once it's soulbound? No, it is. It's soulbound to that uh there's no like sending it to a burn address but again the key though is um is opting in is like yes this is something that i want to be a part of my address um i think if i'm not mistaken actually did say that some could have a chance to be burned like for example if uh we get to the point where people are putting their apartment lease as a soul bound nft then whenever that lease is up it can be burned um, I think something like that was actually stated. That makes sense as an expiration, but I'm uh, so yeah. I, I don't know the the you know the idea of soul bound is that it it couldn't be sent somewhere, and our current uh, our current method of burning is obviously sending to that burn address. Right. So I guess there's another uh, they could develop another system for. Uh, essentially deleting rather than sending to a burn address. Yeah, I, I feel like that would be part of any kind of smart contract that would give out that soulbound NFT. Uh, like, what are the criteria to actually make it so that this disappears from your, uh, from your wallet address? But you would have to agree to everything. So if you didn't want that soulbound NFT, then you wouldn't sign for it. Therefore, you wouldn't get it. So you wouldn't have to worry about trying to get out of it either. Uh, I feel like allowing control and the responsibility to be on the person is probably the way that you would have to go, right? Just like you, you had said, if it's able to be forced upon you, then it's really not going to work out very well because what if somebody sends you an inappropriate image and now it's stuck to your wallet address forever, you know? <laughs> so It would have to be a claiming mechanism. Like You would opt into it for sure. Just like POAP, you know? Uh, for, for example, whenever we distribute our POAP on the show, we give you the mint link. We don't mint it to your gallery or to your wallet ourselves we say okay here's your mint link mint it wherever you wish but you only get one so (laughs) yeah i feel like that's how this would go too it would be the choice at at any rate i feel like this is important enough 
for the Poep style ecosystem, that it's something that we should probably try to bring up um, every week for like five or eight minutes, um, just for the foreseeable future to kind of uh, evolve with it rather than letting it slip out of our consciousness. Yeah, allowing the conversation to continue can keep it in our minds all the time. I agree with that. But all right, DeFi dude. Unless there's a little hey. bit of things that people want to say to end off the topic, it's about your time. But uh, I'm going to let it be open real quick. Anybody want anything else to say to end off the topic? Yeah, just one tiny thought. I'll just say it real fast. Um, so they address the risks of SBTs and how they could be used to marginalize groups. Um, so this sort of stuff happens now on you know unknown scales in Web 0, 1, and 2. Um, so SBTs would be transparent. Um, you could parse this data um, and you could enable more power to like fight discrimination you know more effectively since the data is public and easy to parse that's it i just i wanted to say that it was like it hurt <laughs> thank you all right DeFi dude what do you got on the spotlight for us this week all right i do have a few here to show everyone i'll be posting them in the community calls chat uh, we already did, you know, cover some cool ones during the call, you know, like the Pepsi ones. Uh, those are really cool. But uh, the first one I want to spotlight is actually the Curio Cards. It's their fifth anniversary party. So if you don't know what Curio Cards is, um, I don't own any, but it is an NFT project. It's actually the first art NFT project on Ethereum. So not the first NFTs, but first art NFT project, and they just had their fifth anniversary party. So this was just a po-op uh, celebrating that anniversary. I guess they had a, a call or some sort of a Decentraland uh, party on May 9th. So I thought that was cool. And the next one is, you know, very common thing for po-op uh, is community calls. Oh, it was a rooftop party hosted by Midaki, Amanda says. Uh, sounds interesting. The next one I have, though, is a community call. Very common, uh, you know, reason to give po-ops. We have one for the very community calls we're all listening to right now. Um, and I thought this was cool, you know, just because it, uh, it designed by the community members. So they uh, give credit to the community and just love to see it, you know, sourcing designs from the community. And, um, of course, you got the cute little doge. Uh, and I believe these are the folks that bought, like, the official NFT of the doge like the original one and tokenized it and i guess they're on their 32nd community call so but that was cool another one here which i actually have no idea on the complete story um i feel like i'm almost like invading in the privacy of it but it's his uh i just thought it was cool it's the po-op curation body policy flying blind apparently they hold a policy meeting this is just what i gathered from the description um, but, uh, yeah, they hold a policy meeting, I guess, every Friday and it didn't happen. So, you know, they just got together, I guess, that night and played poker and kind of had the meeting and, um, yeah, the, the wording was a little, uh, secretive, but, uh, you know, it was, I thought it was cool. Po-op, uh, team made it. And if, uh, you look at the actual design, okay, so it never happened, the call, right. So that's why I like I, from what I could see in the description, it looked like it never happened, and then they played poker. But yeah, I don't know. The wording was a little confusing. But um, that little card uh, wiggles there; it's animated, but you can't see that in the the, the picture uh, there. Another one is Git Poop, which we've discussed. Um, just wanted to highlight it because it is Git Poop. We've talked about it, and uh, Colfax, who's uh, a big part of Git Poop, can't join us, so figured you know. Might as well mention it. They're doing some awesome stuff to incentivize uh, GitHub contributions and stuff like that with POAPs, as far as I know. And they were at the MIT Bitcoin Expo. So interesting. I didn't expect, you know, Git POAP to be at MIT Bitcoin Expo, but I guess why not? And the last one here is Networking for Health. I guess it was a... Uh, Superfizz posted the Discord for Git Poop, so if you're interested in joining, you know, feel free to to join that. But the last one I have to share is Networking for Health. Uh, it is a Poop. It was given at some health convention, I believe, in Berlin, and I, I just wanted to highlight it because one, I think the design was 
pleasant, uh, nice, you know, it uh, is fitting for the the event. But also, you know, it's just cool to see like these are um, healthcare professionals. They even listed like only people working in oncology, cardiology, like a few things, women's health um, were eligible for this. And I actually peeked through the supply of people who received it. And almost everyone, except like I believe the host, this is like their very first POOP or like they had two and they were both from this event. So that's always an awesome thing to see, you know, people being onboarded in real time for the first time to POOP. Uh, so I thought that was cool. And that's all I have to highlight for this week. So yeah, thanks. Amazing as always, DeFi dude. Thank you so much for sharing everything with us this week. But all right, so we are coming up on the end of the show. Is there anything that anybody would like to talk about before we go ahead with the distribution of the show's PO app? So this coming weekend is um, permissionless in West Palm Beach. So if you are going to permissionless or going to be around the West Palm Beach area in Florida, there are going to be a ton of PO apps to be uh, claimable IRL. Um, I am working on curating a bunch, and we are working with IYK to distribute those through Bankless DAO. So, um, so they will not all be within the permissionless um, group. They are going to be distributed. It's going to be like a pirate treasure hunt. So, if you are in that area at the time of the permissionless um, conference. Keep your eyes and ears open, and you might be able to hunt down some POAPs. Oh boy, permissionless. And where again? It was uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Awesome. So permissionless in West Palm Beach, Florida. So where can I get tickets for that? Ah. <laughs> You can't. <laughs> I can't. All sold so, out. Uh, yeah, so, well, you can um, if you want to pay an exorbitant amount of money. The way that they did these tickets was um, the earlier you got them, the cheaper they were. Which means we are, like, five days from the event. They are very expensive right now. So um, my advice is buy them for next year. <laughs> um, unless you just want to, like, really pay a lot of money. Um, or maybe ask for somebody to, you know, trade with you. Oh, see, see. look at the, con the, if you guys are paying attention, you might be able to trade something for something down it in the. It might not be bad comments. to buy now. ETH is up, right? Yeah. Yeah. All time highs in my portfolio right now. It's always up in my eyes. Yep. I was yep. like, it's always progressing to the right. So as long that's as it's true. progressing to the right, we're good, right? I started looking at 2017, and that's the only way I compare it. So we're, we're all right. It's always up. It's always up. And then after Permissionless is VCon. And um, if you guys watch the, uh, the events being, you know, minted, that, you know, there, there's also a ton of events that are minting out PO apps for VCon. Um, including ultrasound merch and people from Bankless as well. <laughs> so <laughs> there are a ton of IRL groups um, that will be minting out POAPs if you guys want to go and get. <laughs> I know the POAP team is like my life right now. Please stop. God. Um, you know what sounds I'm like the best so job sorry. ever? Just going around to these events and collecting POAPs. That sounds like the mm -hmm. best job in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what's even better is trying to organize these events in less than a week when everybody's like, ooh, you know what we should do? A POAP hunt. Oi. Nah, I just like anyway. to participate. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, prayers to uh, the POAP curation board um, as they are having to approve all of these POAPs for two massive IRL events coming up this coming week. <laughs> yes, shout out to them. I mean, hey, I need to make more events myself, so at least you're out there doing the thing. Hey, Mojo, I'm probably going to... The, uh, so tonight is when um, 
RPL rewards are paid for Rocket Pool, so I'm probably going to that Discord tonight, and we're probably going to develop a PO app. And if you want to participate, you might get to stamp your name on it if you're interested. Oh boy, when is this again? Uh, so the RPL payouts happen in about four hours, uh, and we just sort of hang out uh, and just get hype about it. Uh, that's the Rocket Pool Trading Discord. Uh, everyone is welcome. It's just a place to hang out, learn more about Rocket Pool, and kind of get involved with the community. Decentralized staking. Anyway, all right, everybody. So it's about time that we distribute the poet for this call. I want to thank everybody yep. for coming to the show, as always. Lots of people here this week. Very awesome. Hopefully we have enough mint links. I, I'm, I'm sure that we do. But all right. Oh, I made sure of it. Um, they even asked me, are you sure you want this many? And I was like, listen. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. So you want to go to the POAP claim channel here in this official POAP Discord. And you're going to type forward slash claim. Again, that is forward slash. That is the button with the question mark right next to the right shift button. And you're going to want to type in C-L-A-I-M and claim your PO app. But all right, everybody, I hope you have a great rest of your night. We will see you next week, of course, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 p.m. UTC. Thanks, everybody, for having us. Take care.